Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this Lightboard lesson video, we're going to talk about inspecting public cloud traffic, and more specifically, uh, transparently inserting the SSL orchestrator into public cloud traffic flow, and we're, we're going to be able to accomplish this, obviously, obviously using the Big IP SSLO, but also a company uh, called Aviatrix, and how they help with some of the routing and networking um, to be able to do all this. All right, so to start things off, uh, really quickly I wanted to talk about how companies are moving from uh, you know, on-prem data centers to the public cloud, and rightfully so. But one of the things that you, that you actually maintain when you're on-prem is uh, the control at, at all these networking layers, you know, the hypervisor, physical routers, um, different zones, that kind of thing. Uh, but whenever you move to the public cloud, you give up a lot of that control uh, or certainly that control becomes a lot more difficult to maintain. So, you know, you can maintain routing tables and all that in the public cloud. It's just, it's much more difficult to do that, right? So, what we want to be able to do is still inspect our encrypted traffic uh, for any kind of security threats or whatever. And, but we want to be able to insert the SSL orchestrator, which is going to do the inspection, into the public cloud traffic flow and do it transparently, all right? So, to start off, I wanted to say a quick word about the SSL orchestrator. Uh, so, if you have a user, I'll just put, you know, user here, accessing your web application, then in line with that, you can put uh, the big IP SSL orchestrator. And so, the SSL orchestrator is, one of, is a module on the big IP. Um, and then I'm going to put a little arrow out to what would be your web applications. So web apps right here, and so I'll just put a couple little things like that. All right, so um, the, the way that the SSLO works is as user traffic comes in to access an encrypted web application, then the traffic coming into the SSL orchestrator is going to be encrypted. So I'll put a little lock right here uh, to show that this traffic is encrypted. The Big IP SSL orchestrator is going to decrypt the traffic. Uh, so I'll put like, a, like an, un, you know, a, an open lock right there. And then the SSL orchestrator is then going to be connected to a variety of security devices. Uh, I'll just put a couple of examples. Let's say you have an IDS. Let's say you have a, a data loss prevention. Um, and let's say you have a, like a web application firewall, for example. Um, the way that this works in a very general you know, perspective is user traffic comes in encrypted. And then the, S the SSL orchestrator decrypts the traffic, and then it sends the traffic down to one or more or all of the security devices. But it's already decrypted the traffic, so you don't have to, you know, un or, or uh, decrypt the traffic, send it to one, and then re-encrypt it to only unencrypt it or decrypt it again to send it to the next. Um, some companies do that in, in like this daisy chain type setup, but this is a much more effective way to do it where you decrypt the traffic one time, you send it to the various security devices, they take whatever actions they need to take, send the traffic back to SSL Orchestrator, and then it moves on to the web applications. Um, one of the other cool things about SSL Orchestrator is that it classifies the traffic. So let's say you have you know, a banking application back here and any kind of traffic you know, destined to maybe a bank website, you want it to go through all of the security devices, but maybe you have another web application that it doesn't need for whatever reason every single security device that you have, you know, in your, in your arsenal. Uh, so it can, you know, that SSL orchestrator can send the traffic based on the classification of the traffic to one or more or all or whatever. Um, another quick thing about this is, let's say you have like a, a firewall, for example, and you need to do some maintenance on it or you want to do some testing on it, that kind of thing then you can actually take, um, let's say you have you know, several of them, you can take one of them out of this entire setup, do the testing, do the maintenance without disrupting any of the traffic flow here, and then you can put it back in once you're done. And so it's just a, a very powerful uh, security inspection uh, technology here, the SSL orchestrator. Okay, so this is the thing that we want to insert into the public cloud traffic flow, and we want to do that transparently and like I said, we're going to use Aviatrix to be able to do this. So I'm going to put Aviatrix right here. Um, Aviatrix, and specifically the Aviatrix controller, is where we're going to start. And this is kind of the brains behind the entire Aviatrix uh, setup. Um, quickly, uh, the way that Aviatrix does what they do is they, they understand, they leverage the, the public cloud API infrastructure, and, and they can dynamically define and adjust routing tables as needed. Um, and so, like I said, the, um, 
the, the way that you start here is with the Aviatrix controller, so I'll put a little box around this, and they're, they're in multiple clouds, Aviatrix. So for the purposes of this discussion, I'll use uh, Amazon technology, so you know, uh, VPCs and AWS, that kind of thing. Uh, but they're in, they're in multiple public clouds, Aviatrix is. So to, to do the Amazon part, you would go to the Amazon, the AWS marketplace, you would get the Aviatrix controller, you would load it up, and then from this controller, you can start to create a, you know, your, your uh, entire setup here, right? So the first thing that you'll create is a transit VPC. So I'll put transit VPC. And uh, contained within that VPC is the Aviatrix Transit Gateway. So I'll put Transit Gate, I'll just put GW for Gateway. So this is, uh, and I'll put a little router symbol right here. Um, okay, so from the Aviatrix controller, you define and establish the Transit VPC uh, that contains the Aviatrix Transit Gateway. Um, and the way that Aviatrix works, uh, the uh, kind of the architecture, if you will, is a hub and spoke model. So you build the hub, so this is gonna be the hub, the Aviatrix Transit Gateway, and then from there you can build the spokes that are going to connect to now the hub. So let's say you have a development, uh, I'll put a dev VPC, and let's say you have a QA um, VPC, and then let's say you have production. So I'll put a prod VPC. Right, and so within this VPC, you're going to uh, enable and establish the Aviatrix. So I'll put Aviatrix spoke gateway. All right, because remember it's the uh, hub and spoke model. So I'll put a little router symbol here, and likewise. And I'm not going to write that whole thing out, but I'll put Aviatrix spoke gateway, and then. Um, Aviatrix spoke gateway here, and so you get the point of what's going on here. I'll put the little router symbol. Okay, so I'm going to put a little box around this VPC, and so now from even from the Aviatrix controller, we have now uh, created the uh, development VPC, the QA VPC, the production VPC, as well as the transit VPC, and now all of these are connected. So I'll just put a, a little line, you know, from here, here, and here, just like that. So this is the hub, these are the spokes. Um, I'm gonna come back down here to the uh, transit VPC and the Aviatrix transit gateway that's uh, inside that. Uh, and here you would, you would also define a policy in the FireNet, so FireNet, uh, which stands for Firewall Network, but this is a device that can be used for any kind of service insertion um, you know, any kind of security device that you want to put in line, you know, in this whole traffic flow. And so this is where you're going to define um, and configure the policy that's going to bring in the SSL orchestrator, right? So I'll just put right here, um, SSL orchestrator. And let's say, for example, that you want any uh, traffic that's, um, that's going to or from the QA VPC to be inspected by the SSL orchestrator and all the security devices that are connected to that, right? So effectively what you would do is in the FireNet policy, you would, uh, you would add the, uh, the, this um, Aviatrix spoke gateway uh, from the QA VPC. So I'll just, here I'll just put you know, QA VPC here. So you would establish that or you would define that within the FireNet policy. And once you define that and enable that, then, uh, then any kind of traffic that's, that's going to the QA VPC or uh, outbound from the QA VPC would be routed through the SSL orchestrator because that is the security device that's been now inserted in the FireNet policy that's been enabled within uh, this VPC. Um, so uh, I, I would say quickly that uh, from an SSLO perspective, the default route uh, is the Aviatrix Transit Gateway. So just as a little quick note there. So um, the way that this would work then is I'm going to put I'm gonna put kind of a box around this whole uh, this whole thing. The way that this would work then is let's say you have um, traffic uh, leaving the development VPC destined for the QA VPC. So I'm going to put kind of a dotted line for this one. So it would come down here to the transit uh, VPC, the Aviatrix Transit Gateway, and then it would be routed through the SSL orchestrator. That's been defined as a security device there, obviously. 
And then coming out of the SSL orchestrator, I'm gonna, I guess I'll put a little kind of, uh, you know, flow out. So then it's gonna come out of the transit gateway, AVHX transit gateway, and it's gonna go up to the QA VPC there, right? And so effectively what's happened is now the traffic that comes out of development because it's destined for QA, the QA VPC, um, and because that's been defined within the FireNet policy to be inspected by the SSL orchestrator, uh, now it's, it does exactly that. Uh, likewise, if you came out of the QA VPC headed somewhere else, it would go through the SSL orchestrator because of this um, definition here. Um, so one of the, so I guess one of the really cool things is that as you establish all this, via the AVHX controller, um, all of the routing, the IPs, and the subnetting, and all that is taken care of by AVHX. And that's where you can do all this stuff transparently. You can transparently uh, insert security devices like the SSL orchestrator into the public cloud traffic flow uh, using all this. And so if you were to, say, add another VPC or maybe take, a, take one of these out or whatever, then AVHX is, gonna, is going to do the, do the magic, you know, to be able to update routing tables and subnets and IPs and all those things that are needed to maintain connectivity here. And it doesn't just kind of automatically do this. I mean, it is, it is kind of, it is really cool stuff, but the, the AVHX technology, um, really it, it programs the underlying VPC routing table. Uh, so it integrates directly with the underlying cloud technology. So, you know, if you were to look at the routing table in the VPC, you would see the AVHX configuration there. Um, so it's, it's a really powerful tool. Uh, the other thing that I would mention is while all this is kind of a, a, an example in AWS, like I said, they're um, involved in multiple clouds. So I'll just put Azure over here as another just quick example. Um, and I won't draw out the entire thing, but suffice it to say, you could have, and I'll just put some boxes here to represent, you could have a hub and spoke, you know, situation going on here. And let's say that this AVHX spoke gateway, um, you know, tra uh, traffic coming out of the QA VPC in AWS is destined for this, you know, spoke, AVHX spoke gateway here um, in Azure, maybe this VNet, then traffic would come out of AVHX spoke gateway here in this QA VPC and it would uh, hit the AVHX transit gateway and then be routed over to uh, the transit gateway here the AVHX transit gateway here in Azure and then down to, you know, down to this VNet and then, you know, on back or, you know, however that needs to work. Um, but you get, I guess you can see the, the traffic flow that can happen among multiple public clouds. So, um, so again, you know, the, the thing that we're trying to do is inspect our public cloud traffic because, you know, we all know that there's a lot of malware, there's a lot of attack, you know, traffic happening out there. So we need to inspect uh, this traffic and most of it if not frankly all of it depending on your company is encrypted so we need to inspect encrypted traffic which is where the SSLO comes in um, but then we need to be able to do all the routing and all of the underlying you know architecture work and that's where AVHX comes in and provides a really powerful solution so so anyway so I hope you've learned a couple of things here about how to in inspect public cloud traffic and how to insert these security devices transparently into the public cloud traffic flow. So hey, if you like this Lightboard lesson video, you can click here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.